So I always said this project was going to be like open heart surgery with the patient awake. Every day we have to run trains on every rush hour. No outages on the rush hours. We were building a railroad in an operating railroad. These Long Island Railroad tracks were built back in the 1800s and it's been a two-track system for, for many, many years. And the idea of adding the third track here was to improve the capacity, improve the throughput of, of the passengers and service on the rail line. It's transformational. You're, you're changing transit-oriented development uh, that's being introduced into these areas, uh, creating new parks, new public spaces. Every community is going to receive and is receiving substantial benefits as a result of the project. Um, and that's not just transit oriented. I think as time goes on, there are going to be a lot of other benefits that just become evident as the project you know, gets completed and, and matures over time. I'm standing here at the great elimination site. Uh, all of these grade crossings, during the rush hour, the gates were down a half an hour every hour. The traffic congestion, the noise, um, the emissions from cars just idling, sitting in their communities, plus the safety aspects. A number of fatalities um, on the tracks where the vehicular traffic would, would cross in front of a train. So one of the key focal points of this project was to eliminate those at-grade crossings. So we're actually taking the vehicular traffic underneath the train tracks and, and creating a much safer system. There was a U-shaped concrete structure that would be jacked into place by a whole system of hydraulic jacks. It's an Italian-based system that the first time it's been used here in the United States. And what would happen on a, on a Friday evening, they'd start the demolition and they'd get it all excavated and they'd start the jacking procedure. By the end of, of Saturday, beginning of Sunday morning, that U-shaped structure would be in place. They'd begin the backfill and the establishment of the new embankments, put the tracks back in place and by Early Monday morning, 5, 6 a.m., revenue service would commence again. People were pleased that they were able to continue to use the train service, especially those people who needed it, you know, to get to their jobs every day. Many of the stations were renovated, a few of them rebuilt, and, and brought in lovely architectural features and new materials that blend in so well with the existing community. When Stantec called and asked us if we wanted to join their team, we were pretty thrilled. One thing I think has always been true of Stantec is they want to partner with the best and they let all of us do our jobs. And as a women-owned business, that isn't always the case. I really think the best architecture is experienced, not just looked at in pictures and you know, it's gratifying to go through each of these stations, they're not 100% finished, but it makes an experience that's unique to each station. The station upgrades in addition to renovating you know, the exterior, the interior, were also all made completely ADA accessible. When creating the upgrades around the, the transit facility, we had the ability to do a lot of upgrading to the, the landscape architecture. Part of the rebuild program was bringing in 1,400 new trees and 2,600 shrubs. The success of the mega project is gonna be what's visible in the architecture. This is what's going to count to regular people as they do their commute. I think at the beginning of this job we probably had 75 or more workshops, uh, presentations to various community groups uh, to get their ideas, uh, knocking on doors. Uh, th this is an intrusive project, there's no question about it. Uh, you know, we're working in people's backyards to put up walls 
we were working adjacent to uh, homes when we were doing the, these major work round the clock. A lot of the issues that we felt were important to be incorporated into the design, you know, we were successful in getting those incorporated in. So I think that those parts of the community that engaged were successful in getting those things done. Hey, the partnership on this project, I've been around a while, I've managed a lot of projects. The team aspect of this project, the co-location, working together um, with the design teams, the construction teams, doing constructability reviews together, it's been nothing I've ever experienced. There are deadlines on this project where you had double track outages planned six months in advance to do something like this great cross elimination. Uh, and everybody bought in that uh, you know, we just couldn't move those dates. Uh, so whether it was you know, Stantec working uh, to accelerate a design review or, or deal with the problem in the field, Long Island Railroads, Force County Resources, our own workers, uh, just everybody had to pull together to, to make that happen. Uh, and, and we did it. And, and uh, you know, it's just the amount of cooperation between all parties is like something I've never you know, seen before. And, and one of the things that makes this project you know, particularly unique is, is the supplier diversity that was an MTA requirement and really taken to heart by Stantec and the design team and by our contractor, Third Track Constructors. And it's amazing how that, that diversity in your project teams, you know, create a better outcome. I just went through a lessons learned with the entire agency yesterday, not only on this project, but on how we could do things better. And really, this project is the example. So people now, as the project's coming to an end, you know, are, are finally you know, getting to, to see that what we promised four years ago, we're delivering. I have to say that the project was carried off in a manner that um, probably couldn't have been much better in terms of managing expectations of all the stakeholders, managing the disruption, you know, just completing it in a way I think that uh, will make the end result far outweigh, you know, the disruptions and the, the uh, inconveniences that went along the way. It's really important to us, to the planet, that we really embrace public transit as being the easier, better way. I just take enormous pride of being here today and, and seeing this, you know, transformation of this very important mobility asset here in Long Island. Great eliminations, bridge replacements, building 10 miles of track, 10 miles of retaining walls while running trains every single day for every single rush hour. Double track outages on the weekend were the key. The bridge push technology, I'm happy to stand here today to say that not only did we bring this project in under budget, but we're on schedule. It all starts with teamwork, it ends with teamwork. We had a great contractor, a great owner, great design firm, great union uh, support the whole time. And um, I hope one day to have another project as successful as this one.